Hey guys, so today we're going to check out a few great pentatonic phrases. And so first, let's just do a quick review of what pentatonic scales are and how we can use them. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel here because I'm going to be making a lot more content for you all while I'm off tour. So a pentatonic scale is a five note scale and there are a bunch of different types of pentatonic scales that you can play. I actually go into a lot of detail about all your different pentatonic scale options in a masterclass that I made for jazz lesson videos. But today we're just gonna check out phrases using major, dominant, and minor pentatonic scales. So first let's check out how those are constructed and how we can use them. So a major pentatonic scale just takes the first, second, third, fifth, and sixth degrees of a major scale. So if you played it from C, the notes would be C, D, E, G, and A. That can sound great on a C major seven, and if we played it up and down, it would sound like this. Now if you want to use an alternative option, you can get a much more colorful sound by using the G major pentatonic scale on a C major seven chord. So then you'll end up outlining the second, third, fifth, sixth, and seventh degrees of the chord. That will sound like this. So the first phrase that we're gonna check out is going to be a phrase that uses that technique, where essentially you're playing a major pentatonic scale from the fifth degree of that major chord. And all the phrases that we're checking out today actually come from a new release that I put out with Jazz Lesson videos that's called 67 Pentatonic Phrases. And that release includes all of these phrases written in all 12 keys, plus backing tracks to practice with also in all 12 keys, and recordings of me playing every single phrase to use as a reference. So that's gonna be a really great resource to check out. And if you wanna get a download of that this week, you can use code JLV5 for $5 off that PDF package download. So first let's play this phrase and then we'll break it down after. <laughs> So in this phrase, we actually use both the G major and C major pentatonic scales over this C major seven chord. Now keep in mind, the only difference between the two is that the G major pentatonic scale has the note B instead of the C that's in the C major pentatonic scale. So as you can see, for these first three bars, we're playing a lot of Bs, and essentially that just gets a more colorful effect, especially when we're going to are coming from the note D. The reason for that is we're outlining the seventh and ninth degrees of the chord, which people call the upper tension. The ninth is the same exact note as the second degree of a chord. So when we call it a ninth, it really just pertains to how it's being voiced on a chordal instrument up high above where the root is being played. And despite the register that we're in, if we're on a C major seven chord and we play a solo line that embellishes B and D, it kind of sounds like we're embracing the higher part of the chord, as opposed to when we play C and D, it kind of sounds like we're just playing the first two notes of the scale. So let's check out the difference between those two sounds. Now the other way of thinking about this alternate device on a major chord would be to play a minor pentatonic scale from the third degree of the chord. So on C major seven, that would be an E minor pentatonic scale. Which brings up the point that if you play a major pentatonic scale from the last degree of the scale, or just move down one degree from the root, you'll end up playing a minor pentatonic scale. That's not super important to think about because you wanna learn the scales from their own root but it's just something nice to be aware of. And with that in mind, let's check out the minor pentatonic scale. So when we check out the minor pentatonic scale, let's build it in reference to a Dorian minor scale, which is the go-to minor scale for a minor seven chord. Though worth noting, you can totally play Aeolian and melodic minor as well on a minor seven. 
So now when we look at this minor pentatonic scale, we can build it off of the first, third, fourth, fifth, and seventh degrees of the Dorian minor scale. That will end up sounding like this. And if we play a phrase using the scale, it will sound like this. Now, just like we have another option that's still inside the chord on a major chord, we also have another great option on a minor chord, and that device is going to be using a dominant pentatonic scale from the fourth degree of the minor chord. That will sound like this. And if we use that harmonic device in a phrase, it will sound like this. So now with that in mind, let's check out the dominant pentatonic scale and we'll see how that's constructed and also we'll check out how we can use it just on a dominant seven chord. And just a reminder that all of these phrases are available for download in my new release on jazzlessonvideos.com. That's called 67 Pentatonic Phrases and that PDF ebook download has all those phrases written out in all 12 keys for you, plus backing tracks in all 12 keys and recordings of me playing every phrase. So you can have that as a reference. And so it'll be a really great resource for you to get more into pentatonics. So when we build a dominant pentatonic scale, we can build that scale with Mixolydian as a reference. Mixolydian is just a fancy modal label to the scale that pairs with the dominant seven chord. And if we take the first, second, third, fifth, and seventh degrees of that scale, we'll end up with a dominant pentatonic scale. As we just heard on a minor chord, it can be really effective to use a dominant pentatonic scale from the fourth degree of a minor seven chord. But you can also just use it from the root of a dominant seven chord. That will sound like this. <laughs> And a cool phrase using that technique would sound like this. So now that we've gotten comfortable playing phrases with pentatonic scales inside of given tonalities, now let's experiment with going outside the tonality using a concept that I like to call pentatonic shifting. With that concept, we're gonna shift in and out of different tonalities using tension and release. This is a device that so many jazz legends have used, everyone from John Coltrane to Michael Brecker, and it can be really hip for using, especially on one chord vamps and tonality that stagnates in terms of what you're playing over or what you're playing with. So if you're playing on a one chord vamp or a groove or something like that, you can definitely use this concept but it also works really well on jazz standards if you just think about where the tonality of the chord progression is lying. So if you're playing a two, five, one or a three, six, two, five, one, just think about it as all being a one major type of thing and then use pentatonic shifting to shift around those chords. So there are a couple different ways that you can go about the technique of pentatonic shifting. And that's something that I go really deep into in the pentatonics masterclass that I released with jazz lesson videos. But for now, let's just check out a phrase that uses the approach of shifting with the nearest degree from bar to bar. What that means is just every time we shift into a new pentatonic scale, we're going to get there by voice leading to the closest degree up or down in the new tonality. So the last note of the first tonality will just step closely into the first note of the next tonality. For instance, in this phrase, you'll see at the end of measure one, we have the note G, which is the fifth of the C minor seven chord. It's also the fourth note of the C minor pentatonic scale. From that note, we wanna shift into the C sharp minor pentatonic scale. So we're gonna do that by going down just a half step and landing on an F sharp. That F sharp will then be the third note of that C sharp pentatonic scale. Or you could also think of it as being the fourth degree of C sharp minor seven. Now we keep using that technique throughout the phrase where we're just shifting with the closest degree to get into the next tonality. And the tonality that we embellish just keeps on going up in half steps. And so you'll notice each scale tonality that we're implying here has a different degree of tension depending on how it sits in the original tonality. So for instance, the D minor pentatonic scale is actually pretty inside sounding on C minor because all the notes fall within the C Dorian scale, 
which is the scale that pairs with C minor seven. However, in that second measure, it's much more tense because none of the notes in the C sharp minor pentatonic scale are shared with the C minor Dorian scale. Now, a lot of times when we play these phrases, we can start inside, then go outside and resolve inside at the end. But sometimes it can be totally cool to just actually not resolve and just end the phrase with something that sounds pretty tense. And so that's what we do here by ending with an E flat minor pentatonic scale on C minor seven. So that's all gonna sound like this. <laughs> All right, guys, so there's five pentatonic phrases for you. I hope you learned something from the video today. Definitely make sure to check out the full PDF ebook download so you have that as a resource and so you can get deeper into this concept. And if you want, you'll notice that a lot of the phrases that we were playing today used a lot of cool pentatonic shapes. So there's obviously definitely a technical aspect to pentatonic playing. And you can actually get deeper into that by checking out the Pentatonic Patterns for Jazz Improvisation ebook that I released with Jazz Lesson videos. And of course, there's also the masterclass so you can go really deep into the concepts like pentatonic shifting to understand different techniques and approaches to accomplish that cool concept. You can get all those PDF eBooks as part of the pentatonic combo package download. So definitely make sure to check that out as an ultimate resource for getting into this pentatonics concept. All right, guys, if you haven't already, make sure to click subscribe, give this video a like if you enjoyed the content, and I will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching.